Welcome back my fellow radiation nerds. Today we will be taking a closer look at the radioactive isotope of lead, the lead 210. If you enjoy this content, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming uploads. Thanks, and now back to the video. The element lead is a dense heavy metal with an atomic number of 82, making it the heaviest stable element in the periodic table. Despite its high density, lead is surprisingly soft, which makes it very easy to bend and shape. In its pure form, lead has a silvery grey color, similar to most metals, but when exposed to air, it oxidizes and darkens over time. Lead has been known to humans since the ancient times, where it was a popular material thanks to its malleability and a relatively low melting point of 327 degrees Celsius. For example, the Romans used the lead in plumbing, cookware, and cosmetics. However, they weren't aware of its toxicity, which contributed to many health issues including neurological damage, gastrointestinal problems, and developmental delays. Today, the use of lead is much more limited to help minimize potential health risks. However, it is still being used in some key industries, including production of lead acid batteries or in radiation protection. In nature, there are several isotopes of lead, with the most common one being lead 208, which makes up for 52.4%. This is followed by lead 206 at 24.1% and lead 207 at 22.1%. All of these isotopes are stable, but lead also has a few naturally occurring radioactive ones. These isotopes are found in the decay chains of uranium and thorium and aren't present in a typical lead ore. Most of them have a pretty short half-life, ranging from few minutes to several hours, except one, lead 210. Lead 210 exists naturally in trace amounts, as it is one of the daughter isotopes of uranium. More precisely, it is produced by the decay of polonium-214 through an alpha emission, or by beta decay of thallium-210. It undergoes a beta decay into bismuth-210, and it also releases a gamma ray at 47 keV, and has a half-life of 22.3 years. Bismuth then undergoes a beta decay into polonium-210, which finally decays into stable lead-206 by releasing an alpha particle. In very rare instances, lead-210 will undergo an alpha decay, turning into mercury-206, which then decays for a beta emission into thallium-206, which finally decays by releasing a beta particle turning into stable lead-206. Since lead-210 is the only radon daughter isotope with long half-life, it can accumulate and build up over time, especially in areas where high levels of radon gas are present. My sample of lead-210 is a bit of an unconventional one. In order to create it, I used active carbon pellets, which I have then exposed to strong radon emitter, and I have left them sealed in a jar for over two years. After removing the radon source, the jar was extremely radioactive due to all the short-lived isotopes being present. But after a few days, they have decayed, leaving only the longer-lived isotopes, including lead-210 and polonium-210 inside. When the lid of the jar is removed, the active carbon pellets read about 500 counts per minute on my little Model 3 with a 44-9 probe when measured just above the open jar. The gamma dose rate is barely above background, and my racing detects an increase of about 10 counts per second when placed right next to the jar. A gamma spectroscopy of my LED 210 revealed a clear peak at 47 keV, with a smaller X-ray peak to the left. The peak at 47 keV can also be seen in gamma spectra of uranium and radium, which makes it pretty interesting to see how the peaks from the parent isotopes start to disappear as we go lower in the decay chain. Exploring the radioactivity of lead 210 was a lot of fun, and I have certainly learned a lot about it. It has definitely shown me that while radon might have a short half-life of 3.6 days, its daughter isotopes will remain radioactive for many years to come. If you want to find out more about radon, I highly recommend checking out my previous video about it, which I have linked in the description below. I want to hear from you. Do you have any radioactive lead samples? And what other radioactive isotopes should I cover in the future videos? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If yes, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. 
Also feel free to check out my coffee page where you can donate a nice cup of radioactive coffee and support my work financially. And remember, stay active!